I've got something in my van that a lot of nomads don't have, an amateur radio station. Actually two, but we'll get into that later. It's actually not as unusual as you might think, especially places where nomads gather, like Portside, Arizona. There are quite a few radio people around. In fact, for one week in January, there is a campout gathering of radio people out here on the desert. They call it Quartz Fest because it takes place just outside of Quartzite. But I'm getting ahead of myself. What exactly is amateur radio? Amateur radio, also known as ham radio, is a non-commercial but licensed radio service which uses allocated frequencies that aren't being used by things like AM and FM to allow radio enthusiasts to provide emergency communications, improve their technical skills, and enhance international goodwill by having discussions across country borders about national snack foods or whatever the case may be. Okay, but these days, anyone can do that on the internet. So, why is ham radio special? Ham radio relies on no pre-established communication grids. During the 9-11 attack on the World Trade Center, cell phone service was overloaded and utterly crippled. So amateur radio operators helped victims contact their families and provided communications for emergency personnel participating in search and rescue operations. Yeah, I know a thing or two about that. That was me. Alright, enough about that. Let's get to what I have, what I do, and what I use. Now, fair warning, this may get a little bit geeky at times, so I'll try to put a nerd warning at the bottom here so that you know what parts you can skip across if you don't want to know all about my Kenwood TMV-71A. Nerd! This is my Kenwood TMV-71A. It is a dual band radio that sits under my dashboard here. It covers the amateur two meter and 70 centimeter bands. That's 144 megahertz and 440 megahertz. Right now I've got it monitoring two frequencies in the two meter band simultaneously. It'll do that too. This radio puts out 50 watts of power and is good for local to medium range communications, especially if I'm relaying through a mountaintop repeater, which well, it does just that. It relays my signals and enhances my range. That's something hams can do that a lot of the other radio services don't. KJ1H testing. WB7FIK repeater. I also use it for APRS, which is the Amateur Packet Reporting System. When I'm driving, I monitor the national calling frequency, 146.52, and I have the other side of the radio connected through my an app on my phone to a position reporting service. That means that after I make a road trip, like my recent drive from Gila Bend to Quartzsite, I can go back and track my route, see where I went. Outside the van, I have a fairly standard dual band mobile antenna. Put it on the other side of my AM FM antenna, so it actually looks a little balanced that way. It's also worth mentioning the radio practically every ham has, the Baofeng UV5R. This is a cheap, literally $30 Chinese radio that does the same frequencies as the Kenwood I just showed you. And it doesn't go very far, but it's good for talking locally. It has a range of a few miles. Of course, repeaters will make that better. I can even set up my mobile radio to be a repeater. So I can walk around with this and basically use it like a wireless microphone around camp while still putting out the power I need to get to farther away places. You can get access to all of this with the most basic of the three amateur radio license classes, the technician license. That gives you access to everything from 50 megahertz up, including the frequencies that these two radios do and a whole lot more. So a lot of people, they get their technician license and they never get anything more. And that's perfectly okay. Me, well, I've been doing this since I was a kid and I've made my way up through all of the license classes, so I have the extra class. I didn't do it so much to unlock the additional frequencies as to become a volunteer examiner so I can help give the ham radio license exams. That's really more why I wanted it. The frequencies are nice too, and now I finally have a radio that will take advantage of them again. Which brings us to this, my recently acquired 
Zegu Zegu Zegu. It's my G90 HF radio. I can set this radio up either inside or outside, whichever I like to do. It takes even less power than my other radio. It only transmits 20 watts, but it's enough to go all over the world. The reason for that is the frequencies it does. This is in the 28 megahertz band now. It'll do all the amateur frequencies between the 10 meter band and even the 160 meter band. In other words, frequencies in the short wave band. That means that they have the capability to go out, bounce off the ionosphere, come back down hundreds, thousands of miles later. So far, I've made contacts all over the US, the East Coast, Washington State, Vancouver Island, Canada, and even Japan. Every radio needs a good antenna, and here's mine. It's an Alpha Antenna Full Metal Jacket. It is a dedicated portable antenna. Comes with its own tripod, the coil, everything you need to put your radio on the air. Hi, right, Dustin. Take care of 73. King Juliet 1 Hotel. Victor Echo 7 Delta X-ray Foxtrot. You're in the QRZ log with Class C5. Over. Very good. I copy your 55. I'll put you on QRZ as well to, uh, to confirm everything, make it all good. All right. Thank you for the contact from Vancouver Island from sunny Arizona. I'll let you get to what you need to do today, and it's time for me to get some lunch. So, 73, VE7DXF from Kilo Juliet 1 Hotel, 73. How many watts you push in there, Preston? 20, two zero watts. Oh my God. <laughs> You're doing good. 20 watts. I never ran 20 watts for 40 years. Oh boy. <laughs> 20 watts, you're doing an excellent job. Excellent audio. Okay. Hey, 73, you're logged in. I'm pretty new with this radio, but just from the few contacts I've already made, that's usually people's reaction when I tell them I'm only running 20 watts of power. Anyway, that's my ham radio setup. If you would like to know more about it, I'll put some links in the description that'll teach you what you need to know, including what you need to know to pass your license test if you want to go that far with it. So as we say on the air, 73, this is KJ1H. Fleeing from the Cylon tyranny, the last battle star, Galactica, leads a ragtag fugitive fleet on a lonely quest. A shining planet known as Earth. <laughs>